Today we will be discussing the 14th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, which is entitled The Three Modes of Material Nature. This title, The Three Modes, I will try to explain what is the meaning of this title itself. Modes means the way nature influences us. So there are three different ways in which nature can influence a person. So that particular subject is now being explained by Krishna in this chapter. Now what's the link between the previous chapter and this chapter? In the previous chapter, there were six questions by Arjuna. Arjuna had asked towards the end of his six questions, the fifth and sixth question he had asked, what is nature and who is the enjoyer? So in response to that, Krishna had explained in the previous chapter that it is due to the association of the modes of nature that the living being is entangled in this material world, is bound up in this material world. Now in this chapter, Krishna explains what are those modes of nature which entangle or which bind each one of us and how they act, how they bind us and how we can become liberated. That's what Krishna will explain in this chapter. He continues to speak from the previous chapter. He says, Again I shall declare to you the supreme wisdom, the best of all knowledge, knowing which all the sages have attained to supreme perfection. So, from the 7th chapter to the 12th chapter, Krishna had explained devotional service in detail. Now, Krishna is going to further enlighten Arjuna. It is said here, that if one understands this particular subject, the three modes of material nature, then one will come to understand devotional service even better. The knowledge explained in this chapter is superior to the knowledge that has been explained so far in other chapters. By understanding this, one will attain the supreme perfection. Further, Krishna says, by becoming fixed on this knowledge, one can attain to the transcendental nature, which is like my own nature. Thus established, one is not born at the time of creation, nor disturbed at the time of dissolution. We understand from uh, the earlier chapters that uh, the soul does not have any birth or death. Then what is birth? Birth is the soul entering a particular body and death is when the soul has to leave the body. So, this after leaving one body, the soul enters another body. So, this Birth and death is repeated life after life. Now, when did this begin? Actually, we cannot trace the beginning. That is because even though there seems to be some beginning like at the beginning of creation, this creation, maintenance, of this material world and destruction are going on cyclically. So, uh, <clears throat> at the beginning of creation, one is actually able to uh, 
at the beginning of creation one is uh, forced to enter one particular body and when destruction happens then there is no more birth but everything is suspended and again after some time when there is creation again one has to uh, accept another body so by actually becoming fixed in this knowledge krishna is telling no more birth no more death because one is able to attain spiritual nature of like that of krishna that means one is able to go to krishna's personal uh, kingdom never to take birth again further krishna says that uh, i impregnate the total material substance making possible the births of all living beings this is an explanation of the world everything takes place because of the combination of the body and the soul this combination of material nature the body is made of material nature and the living being who is soul is made possible by krishna himself krishna impregnates the total material substance and in that way so many universes uh, come into existence now uh, krishna is injecting the spirit souls the living beings in this material substance so material nature is not the cause of the birth of the living beings the seed is given by krishna and they only seem the living beings seem to come out as products of nature the body is given by nature but the body is given to the spirit soul according to the past activities the body is given and in that way the living being comes out with a particular body and enjoys or suffers according to the past deeds in different bodies then krishna says all species of life are made possible by birth in this material nature and i am the seed giving father so we should understand here clearly it is said krishna is the supreme father of every living being and material nature is the mother all living beings are combination of this body and soul body is material by nature soul is spiritual by nature such living beings are there in all the planets everywhere they are also there in the earth in the water in the fire in the air everywhere there are living beings so all these living beings have material nature as their mother and krishna as their father now krishna explains the main subject of this chapter material nature consists of three modes they are called goodness passion and ignorance when the living being comes in contact with nature he becomes conditioned by these modes i have told you what is modes modes means the way in which the material nature will influence now conditioned means becomes influenced we should remember the spirit soul is actually completely spiritual has got nothing to do with matter or material nature or the body but when the living being is forced to enter a particular body at the time of birth then that birth 
in the the birth in the body particular body one becomes influenced by these three gunas or these three modes by goodness passion and ignorance and it is always a combination of these three gunas in different proportions that one is influenced now the kind of combination of these three uh, modes or three uh, gunas is the cause of varieties of happiness and uh, distress which is suffered or enjoyed by the living beings krishna describes each of these modes now first he says what is the mode of goodness the mode of goodness being purer than the others is illuminating and it frees one from all sinful reactions those situated in the mode of goodness become conditioned by knowledge and happiness the effect of developing the mode of goodness or being influenced by this goodness in this material world is that one becomes wiser than the others and as a result of becoming wiser or more intelligent uh becoming more knowledgeable a person in the mode of goodness is not so much affected by material miseries the difficulty is due to this influence of this goodness a person feels i am very advanced in knowledge and i am better than others in this way one becomes proud of his knowledge and because of that they begin to feel a sort of happiness this sense of advanced happiness makes them bound up to this mode of goodness so repeatedly they may take birth again and again in the mode of goodness but they cannot avoid the repetition of birth and death so because of this uh bondage to the mode of goodness they cannot get liberation they cannot be transferred to the spiritual world then next krishna describes the mode of passion the mode of passion is born of unlimited desires and longings and because of this one is bound to material activities so shri la prabhupad explains the mode of passion is characterized by attraction between man and woman woman has attraction for man and man has attraction for woman this is called the mode of passion and when this mode of passion is increased one develops hankering for material enjoyment in order to secure material enjoyment one has to work very very hard therefore one becomes very much addicted to getting favorable results of the work one performs and with the result of the work one wants to enjoy their senses so the whole material world is more or less in the mode of passion and modern civilization is considered to be advanced in the standards of mode of passion so if there is no liberation for those in the mode of goodness where is the question of any liberation for those in the mode of passion certainly even those in the mode of passion cannot be liberated the third one is the mode of ignorance the mode of ignorance causes delusion of all living beings delusion means totally put into illusion complete illusion the result of this mode is madness indolence and sleep which bind the living being indolence means laziness shrila prabhupada explains how this mode of ignorance works everyone under the spell of mode of ignorance becomes mad and a madman cannot understand what is what so instead of making advancement a person in the mode of ignorance becomes degraded prabhupada gives an example less like 
everyone can see that his grandfather has died therefore he will also die and the children he conceives will also die so death is sure still people are madly accumulating money and working very hard day and night not caring for the eternal spirit soul this is madness so in their madness they are very reluctant to make advancement in spiritual understanding such people are very lazy they when they are invited for spiritual understanding some spiritual discourses or spiritual uh, uh, cultivation of spiritual knowledge they are not interested another symptom of a person situated in the mode of ignorance is that such a person sleeps more than is required generally 6 hours of sleep is enough in a cycle of 24 hours but a person in the mode of ignorance sleeps at least 10 or 12 hours in a cycle of 24 hours such a person appears to be always dejected and is generally addicted to intoxicants and sleeping so this is the influence of the mode of ignorance so from these three descriptions it is clear that all the three modes are binding one in their own way so krishna summarizes the influence of these three different modes the mode of goodness conditions one to happiness the mode of passion conditions one to the results of his action or activity and the mode of ignorance conditions one to madness so definitely the influence is not the same the influence of the ignorance is the worst it conditions one to madness that means one becomes mad due to the influence of the mode of ignorance the mode of passion makes one work very very hard hmm? work day and night very hard in order to get favorable results to enjoy the senses and the mode of goodness uh, forces one to actually um, become complacent about happiness due to enlightenment in knowledge Then Krishna explains these three modes are always competing with each other. Sometimes the mode of passion becomes prominent defeating the mode of goodness and ignorance. And sometimes the mode of goodness defeats passion and ignorance. And at other times the mode of ignorance defeats goodness and passion. In this way there is always a competition for supremacy. What does this mean? That not always all the three will be dominating. At some time goodness dominates, at other times passion dominates and yet at other times ignorance dominates. So since there is a competition between these three modes which is always going on in nature, one who is actually interested in advancing in Krishna consciousness or spiritual life has to actually rise above these three gunas or three modes. If one can practice, one can develop by practice the mode of goodness and thus defeat the modes of ignorance and passion. And if such a person is determined, then by developing the mode of goodness, gradually one can rise even above goodness through devotional service and situate oneself in the spiritual state of pure goodness. Pure goodness is uh, where there is no influence of these three modes of nature by the particular activities one performs it can be understood in what mode one is situated 
There are characteristic activities that will be explained further now. Further, Krishna says, the manifestation of the mode of goodness can be experienced when all the gates of the body are illuminated by knowledge. What's the meaning of this? Prabhupada explains, there are nine gates in this body. Nine gates means nine openings. Two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, the mouth, the genitals and the anus. In the mode of goodness, one can see things in the right position. One can hear things in the right position. One can taste things in the right position. And one becomes, by the influence of the mode of goodness, one becomes cleansed inside and outside. In every gate, there is the development of the symptoms of happiness. And that is the position of goodness. That means, when a person is influenced by this goodness, then because of being situated in knowledge, one is able to see properly, hear properly. Whereas those influenced by passion or ignorance, either because of passion they become too much engrossed in the work they are doing, so they are not able to perceive the reality properly or in ignorance they are conditioned by madness because of which they just cannot know or properly understand whatever they are seeing or hearing or whatever they are perceiving. Then it is described when there is an increase in the mode of passion, the symptoms of great attachment, uncontrollable desire, hankering and intense endeavor develop. Hmm. So, the effect of increasing the mode of passion, what happens to a person? The person becomes very much attached to material enjoyment. And then because of that, there are so many desires for enjoying more and more and more. And because of this, there is intense endeavor, work hard, earn more money, get more uh, material things for enjoying. In this way, a person becomes completely uh, engrossed in working, working, working all the time. So, Prabhupada explains, one in the mode of passion is never satisfied with the position he has already acquired. He hankers to improve his position continuously. If he wants to construct a residential house, he tries his best to have a palatial house, as if he would live there eternally. He develops a great hankering for sense enjoyment, and there is no end to his sense enjoyment. He always wants to remain with his family, in his house, to continue the sense enjoyment with all his family members. There is no end to this. All these symptoms should be understood as characteristic of the mode of passion. When there is an increase in the mode of ignorance, then madness, illusion, laziness and darkness or ignorance are seen. That means, uh, in ignorance, mode of ignorance, as the name itself suggests, there is no proper knowledge and a person in ignorance does not work by any regulation. Simply, they do some work whimsically. Even though they have capacity to work, they are generally very lazy. So actually they don't do any work, they don't make any effort to do some work properly. And this is called illusion. Although consciousness is there in the body, but still life is inactive. So these are the symptoms of one in the mode of ignorance. Then Krishna describes what happens if one dies in the mode of goodness, mode of passion or mode of ignorance. So, there are different destinations. When one dies in the mode of goodness, one attains pure higher planets. What does this mean? 
there are different grades of planets in this whole universe we are on the earth planet earth planet is in the middle that means middle means uh, there is some enjoyment facility and there is some suffering also whereas the higher planets like heavenly planets there is relatively more facility for enjoying life and in the lower planets uh, like patala there is uh, more suffering so it's all relative but in any case if one dies in the mode of goodness then one is able to attain higher planets where there is a greater amount of happiness when one dies in the mode of passion such a person takes birth among those engaged in material activities the characteristics of the mode of passion is too much of material activity so a person who dies in the mode of passion takes birth among those engaged in material activities and when one dies in the mode of ignorance one takes birth in the animal kingdom some people think that when we get human form of life then we never go down to lower species that is not correct here it is explained dying in the mode of ignorance is very risky because one degrades oneself to a lower life form in the scripture it is explained there are different species of living beings among the different species there are totally 84 lakh species so out of his 84 lakh species 4 lakh species are human uh, species and 80 lakh species are all lower like birds and bees and aquatics and worms and insects and germs and plants and uh, all kinds of lower life forms so if one degrades oneself takes birth on a lower life form one has to wait for millions of lifetimes to evolve and come again to the human form therefore one should be very very cautious not to degrade oneself to the mode of ignorance whereby death in the mode of ignorance is very dangerous then uh krishna explains the result of working in the different modes when one works in the mode of goodness one becomes purified when one works in the mode of passion one uh actually develops distress or misery experiences misery and when one works in the mode of ignorance that results in foolishness the activities in the mode of goodness results in enlightenment in knowledge therefore uh, one becomes um, purified of material contamination whereas the activities in the mode of passion are simply miserable shrila prabhupada gives an example to help us understand supposing a person uh, wants to build a very big skyscraper building so much misery has to be undergone before it can be built the financier has to take much trouble to earn a huge amount of money then those who are building they have to work very very hard so much of physical endeavor is there toil is there these miseries are always there so according to the bhagavad gita any activity performed under the spell of the mode of passion there is definitely great misery there may be some so called material mental happiness i have this money or i have this house or whatever or this big building but actually there is no real happiness it is simply a feeling within the mind that's all as far as the mode of ignorance is concerned one working in this mode is simply working without any knowledge and therefore the activities in the present time are miserable 
and one will uh, degrade oneself to lower animal life. The animal life is always miserable because they are always under the spell of illusion. They are unable to understand what is their cause of suffering or they sometimes can't even make out what, um, that they are suffering at all. Now, Srila Prabhupada explains even killing innocent animals is due to the mode of ignorance because the animal killers do not know that in the future the animal will have a body suitable to kill the person who killed that animal. That is a law of nature. Just like in human society, if uh, one person kills another human being, he is punished by being given capital punishment or being hanged. So that's the law of the state. Similarly, there is a complete law controlled by the Supreme Lord. And according to this law, every living creature is the child of the Supreme Lord. And the Lord doesn't tolerate even an ant being killed. So one has to pay for this. So if somebody indulges in animal killing simply for tasting some uh, particular type of uh, uh, flesh, then that is due to the ignorance of the, of the laws of God because of which such an animal killer has to actually suffer in the future by being killed himself. Then... Krishna says, from the mode of goodness, real knowledge develops. From the mode of passion, grief develops. And from the mode of ignorance, foolishness, madness and illusion develop. So the influence of these modes is different. Uh, the best among the three is goodness. Because by the influence of the goodness, there is improvement in knowledge but the mode of passion and ignorance are not very favorable the mode of passion results in increase of misery or grief or suffering and the mode of ignorance results in foolishness madness and illusion increased illusion so the present civilization is not very congenial to the living beings uh, so therefore, it is recommended that we should uh, try to develop Krishna Consciousness. By developing Krishna Consciousness, there will be a uh, mode of goodness. Gradually, one is able to develop the mode of goodness, come out of the modes of passion and ignorance by Krishna Consciousness. And even if not everyone is able to practice Krishna Consciousness. Even if a small percentage of people are able to practice Krishna Consciousness and situate themselves in the mode of goodness, then there can be peace and prosperity for the entire population of this entire world. Krishna Consciousness is so nice. It is absolutely essential for peace and prosperity in the world. Krishna further explains, those situated in the mode of goodness gradually go upward to the higher planets. Those in the mode of passion live on the earthly planets and those in the mode of ignorance go down to the hellish worlds. So the result of the three gunas or modes is very very clearly explained here. The upper planetary system consists of heavenly planets and such uh, people living on heavenly planets are very, very elevated in their consciousness. Uh, and uh, it is desirable to actually develop this mode of goodness and gradually elevate oneself to higher planets where there is um, more knowledge, more enlightenment, more happiness and more peace. The mode of passion is mixed. It is in the middle between the mode of goodness and ignorance. Uh, so there are always mixtures of course, but still uh, 
even a person remains on this earth planet due to the mode of passion, still, uh, the suffering is there, the repetition of birth and death is there, the bondage is there, and the mode of ignorance is very, very risky, because in the mode of ignorance, one degrades down to lower hellish planets. And in the hellish planets, the suffering is much, 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 much more. So therefore, one should actually be careful not to degrade oneself, but to elevate oneself. And the best way to elevate oneself is to practice devotional service or Krishna consciousness. When one sees that there is nothing beyond the modes of nature which are working in this material world, and that the Supreme Lord is actually above these modes. Supreme Lord is never under the influence of these uh, modes. Then one can actually attain to uh, Krishna's own spiritual nature or spiritual kingdom where there is no influence of this material nature at all. That's why Krishna is explaining his own position and trying to help us understand that all activities in this material world generally are carried out by material nature and that is due to the interaction of these three modes. So Krishna says when the living being is able to rise above these three modes, then such a person can become free from birth, death, old age and their distresses and can enjoy nectar even in this life. How is this possible? This is possible only by Krishna consciousness. Uh, although one is in this material body, the body cannot give trouble to a person who is executing Krishna consciousness and thereby becoming immune to different kinds of experiences in this body. As long as the body is there, there may be some happiness or distress. But one can become immune to this uh, happiness and distress by being in Krishna consciousness, by doing devotional service. Now Arjuna asks a very important question. What are the symptoms of a person who is situated in uh, above these modes, not in the modes, above the modes, risen above the modes. And what is the behavior of such a person? And how can one actually uh, rise above the modes? What is the method? So, the method of rising above the modes, Krishna says, is by executing pure devotional service. That's the only way to rise above the modes. And the symptoms Krishna describes are very wonderful of those situated above the modes. He says such a person is neutral to all happenings in this world, remains firm knowing that the modes are active, does not become disturbed. And such a person regards all material possessions as not very valuable and such a person is always situated in perfect knowledge, does not uh, become affected by honor, dishonor, happiness, distress, does not consider somebody as a friend or enemy, different types of relationships in this world, is not affecting the person. So it is very, very um, uh, much desirable to actually rise above the modes by practicing devotional service and actually become situated in the spiritual position above the modes. So that is the uh, end of this chapter. I'll stop. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.